Welcome to another special episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Found Footage Fool. Uh, we are going for the, the big leagues today. No, no more of this screwing around with movies, what I saw on Tubi, uh, and, and, yeah, you know, found in bus stations and whatnot. No, no, no. This is, uh, the, the big leagues, and we're doing Paranormal Activity and Paranormal Activity 2. The plan is to make our way through the entire series because I'm not a very smart man. Uh, actually, this is, uh, you know, partially me just avoiding writing a paper. Like, there's an episode that needs to come out, sure. And I've wanted to do the Paranormal Activity series for a while. That is also true. But should I be, at this moment, writing a linguistics paper? Probably. That's probably true. But <laughs> but I'm going to avoid it a little bit longer by, uh, by doing this episode. And I cannot, uh, I cannot wait, actually, because... This is, like, in my mind, the, the Paranormal Activity series was the one that really kicked the doors open. You know, like, Blair Witch Project, of course, was a big, big deal. You know, it made a billion dollars. I'm, you know, rounding up. But it made a, a ton of money based on a very limited budget. And it, and it made the found footage uh, format very viable. Uh, it, it sort of taught people, well, you can do uh, a relatively cheap movie and make a ton of money if you're using some of these tropes, you know, the very tropes that, w that we talk about here on this show. But it was really paranormal activity that, uh, you know, it didn't pretend, I mean, I guess it kind of does pretend that it was a real thing, but more importantly... It is, uh, you know, a movie that captured the imagination. Like, it was it was sort of uniformly popular as opposed to something like uh, Blair Witch where, you know, that felt a little more divisive. People saw that movie and, and were like, you know, what is the big deal? It's just people walking through the woods. And I feel like Paranormal Activity was the one that hit screens and pretty much everybody thought it was really scary. Um, you know, I mean, yes, there were outliers and there are people who will tell you that paranormal, paranormal activity is not very scary at all, but I don't find that to be true. I, I, I think most of the time people really feel like paranormal activity is a pretty frightening movie. And to that end, I'll tell this story real quick in the upfront, uh, as many of you regular listeners know, um, I have been trying to introduce the kids to horror movies lately and, and trying to, you know, kind of pick my battles. And one of the kids decided that they, they had seen on some YouTube video something about paranormal activity. And they said, I really want to watch paranormal activity. And I was like, you know, that's not, it's scary, but it's not, you know, too vulgar and it's not overtly sexual in a way that is, you know, when you're thinking about what to show kids, you're like, there's shit that they're going to pick up at school. Uh, let it happen there, <laughs> you know, as God intended. And then, um, you know, when they're older, we'll set them straight. But, you know, you just don't want to fill a kid's head with, you know, the, the kind of garbage that I fill my head with. Uh, you know, the garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. So you try to you know, make sure that they're getting moral lessons and, and so forth. And every now and again, I falter and I'm like, yeah, I guess you guys can watch Paranormal Activity. And so we did, it was, it was me and the boy and Paranormal Activity really freaked him out. Like it, that movie scared him, but he liked it and wanted to watch Paranormal Activity too. So that's what we did. We watched Paranormal Activity 1 and we watched Paranormal Activity 2 back to back. And Paranormal Activity 2 was kind of less of a, a deal, but we'll get into that in a minute. But more importantly, it was just a, a fine example of how I slipped up. And since then, both of the kids are now claiming that the house is haunted, even though the house is new. The, the house is only like six months old. 
And so no one ever lived there. And I tried to explain to, to the girl, uh, who's a little bit younger, I was explaining to her, like, the house can't be haunted because all that was ever here before were just woods. It's not like, you know, an Indian burial ground or something. It's just woods. And that there's no, you know, like, people who lived here before that might have died in the house and therefore are haunting it. Like, there's just no way. And she said, okay, okay, well, that makes some sense. But what about the wood? And I'm like, that's what I said. You know, the forest is haunted that, you know, the, this house was built on, the, the woods that were here before. And she's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. What about the wood they used to build the house? And I was like, you mean haunted lumber? You think the lumber itself was haunted? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm not going to argue this any further because uh, you're going to get down to the nails and the bolts and who knows. So uh, it has led to a bit of a, a do in the house where all the kids uh, now think that the house is haunted or there are demons stalking them or something. So uh, I hope that this fades. It seems to be going away and I, I hope that it fades more in time. Uh, but it was it was a real mess. So let's get into the discussion of, of found footage fool uh, style examination of, of these movies. And let's start with the original Paranormal Activity. Like I said, I, I think this is a legitimately scary movie. I think it's incredibly influential. You know, you don't have... I, maybe some point somebody would have gotten around to the idea of... of home surveillance as a way to do this style of movie. But, you know, it gave rise to things like Bad Ben and, and um, you know, just a, a flurry of movies of this ilk. Which is, is a good thing in my mind. I like this style of movie. I like that, uh, you know, surveillance state kind of film of, hey, you know, we are going to try to capture something on camera. Holy shit, we caught something on camera. Um, as I have probably said on this show before, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, but I do like uh, the idea of hauntings more so than hauntings themselves. You know, or the you know the claims of hauntings. I you know I've gone out of my way to stay in haunted hotels and stuff like that, and you know there there just hasn't been any there there yet. And and until I run into that, then I'm pretty much of the mind that nothing. Uh, paranormal exists until I can I can see it for myself. I am one of those people. Uh, at any rate, let's get into the movie. Paranormal Activity is uh, written and directed by Warren Pelly. Um, there, you know, this may be a bit apocryphal. Uh, maybe he said this in interviews. I'm, I'm not sure, but there was definitely a point where uh, Steven Spielberg apparently saw this movie and and suggested. A different ending to uh, Orin Pelly. There, I think there exists even on Amazon. Uh, you can rent an alternate version of Paranormal Activity that has the original ending. I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. Uh, I don't know. I probably should. Um, but I like this ending just fine, and maybe that's why I have it. I'm just like, ah, it, it ends the way it ought. So uh, the premise is that you have. Uh, Katie and Mika, um, who are a couple in California, and there is some haunting going on at the house. And one of the things I like about Paranormal Activity is that it picks up while the haunting stuff is already happening. You know, like the first time that you see Mika uh, holding the camera and pointing at Katie... Um, he's basically saying, like, hey, you know, there's this weird stuff that's been going on around the house, so I'm going to do what I can to capture it. So we get to our five criteria. Obviously, this is a scientific examination. We're not trying to uh, evaluate these movies in a purely subjective artistic level. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the real deal. And so, uh, number one, keeping the camera on. Does it make sense in paranormal, paranormal activity that they keep the camera on? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole gig, right? Like, this is the thing that kind of set the rules in a lot of ways for how to do this. Either you're setting up the camera, uh, as Mika does, where it's watching the bed as you sleep, which uh, is really effective and kind of eerie, um, or you're holding it. And, you know, the, the other thing that 
the movie does right is when the camera shouldn't be on the characters, it's not. You know, and that might be a complaint at the end of the movie because a lot of the stuff happens off camera. But I think that's sort of perfect, right? Like, you know, the theater of the mind uh, is probably better than anything you would see. Um, and then uh, let's let's jump over to characters. Number two, uh, are the characters in the movie any good? And I think this is another place where this really kind of sings. Like, I think Katie and Mika um, feel very real. Uh, that you can see them be affectionate and fun with one another. You can see them be kind of flirty with one another. You can see them get very frustrated with one another, especially like when Mika brings the Ouija board home after uh, Katie has made it clear that she does not want a Ouija board in the house. And he was like, no, 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 you told me not to buy one. This is this is one that was given to me or, you know, I found or whatever. And she's like, you know what I meant. And she gets real pissed about it. Um, the only real characters in the movie are Katie and Mika. And then there's the psychic that comes over. and Or the medium. And I like the fact <laughs> that in the movie there's that point where he first comes in. And he's like, I don't think this is a haunting. This feels demonic. And this isn't really my bag. I'm going to recommend somebody to you. And it turns out that, hey, that guy that you recommended isn't available right now. And when things start to get bad, um, then, you know, they call the medium back. And he comes in and, like, within two minutes, he's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. This is <laughs> this is not a good... Like, me being here is upsetting whatever it is that's in here. And it's already agitated. So I need to... I need to be feet. This is not cool. Um... And, you know, Mika is kind of an asshole. Like, even when I was watching it with the boy, the he was like, you know, it, it like, this guy seems like he's kind of a jerk. And I was like, you're not wrong. This guy is kind of a jerk. Um, and, you know, he is too persistent. He's, like, you know, goading um, the, the spirit, if you will, into uh, some kind of activity. And, you know, that's just going to be of trouble uh writ large and you know i think all of that stuff really works um so yeah i think the characters are good and i think katie is kind of uh you know sympathetic that she's when she talks about like this kind of thing has been following me since i was a kid and i just want it to be sort of done with um and and gets in over her head partially thanks to mika fucking around like this is a real fuck around and find out kind of movie and mika does plenty of fucking around and then finds out um, all right, so um, characters, great. Let's go to authenticity. And, you know, this speaks to partly what I was saying about the characters and, you know, keeping the camera on. Like, all that stuff feeds into the authenticity of the film. And also, does the movie ever jump the shark? Does it feel real within the confines of, you know, what the movie is? Um, you know, into, into the world that the movie has created. And I would also say that, yes, absolutely, I think that this movie does feel authentic, you know? Um, the camera stays where it should when when it needs to. It moves when it needs to, when the characters need to move it. Um, the, the scares are kind of toned down in a way. Um, they're not, you know, there are a couple of jump scares for sure. But then there's just kind of creep stuff, you know? It's the, the Ouija board catching fire as the as the camera coldly looks on. It's going up into the attic and find the, finding this picture from Katie's childhood that couldn't possibly be there. You know, it's the, the footprints in the flower. It's that kind of stuff. And it's not overblown. And it's just convincing enough, like it's it's eerie and it's it's paranormal, and but it, it's presented in a way that feels real to the point that the boy actually looked at me and asked at one point, like, "Did this really happen?" And I was like, "No, no, no, this is all bullshit." I didn't say it like that, but you know, you get the idea. I, I think that's to the movie's credit, though. I mean, yes, it's fooling a child, but also it's good enough to fool people. Like there were people, I'm sure, that saw paranormal activity and thought that paranormal activity happened, that it was a real thing, uh, until somebody 
a little savvier was like, no, 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 this is all made up. This is a crazy make up. Um, so I, I do think it is incredibly authentic. Uh, it feels very authentic. And then you get to watchability. And that is the entertainment factor, right? Like, it, is this movie entertaining throughout? And I think so. Like, I've seen Paranormal Activity a number of times at this point. And I think it, you know, it, it keeps evolving through the, the, the movie. I think the characters really help with that because you do um, not just like the characters, but kind of relate to the characters and understand the characters. Like, you can appreciate Mika's enthusiasm for this situation, even though he's putting himself in a predicament that is is worsening things. And then by the time he's like, we got to get out of this house, uh, you know, Katie's just kind of done for. Like, you know, the possession is too far along. And I, I do think that you can sort of see the progress go from, um, you know, it's almost that poltergeist progression of, well, this is kind of exciting and interesting to oh, this could be a real problem. Oh, this is a major problem. Oh, this is worse than we thought. And that, I think, is the trajectory of paranormal activity. I think it's what makes it um, not just watchable, but really compelling. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the finer examples of this kind of movie in, in that the characters really do kind of pull you along through the story. The mystery itself is sort of interesting as the movie peels back you know, the, the story of Katie and her childhood and gives you the story in a very subtle way. Like, it delivers its exposition uh, very deftly so that by the end of the movie, you sort of have this understanding of like, oh, there was this demon that's been stalking her since uh, she was a child and it enjoys tormenting her and Mika. And at the end of it, it possesses her because that's what it's wanted all along. And that all works, you know? I mean, better than most of, of the movies of this ilk, you know? It's uh, often duplicated, or often replicated, never duplicated. Is that the expression? That's kind of paranormal activity. A lot of people try to copy uh, this format, even other films within the paranormal activity franchise, as we'll talk about. Um, and this one gets it right. It just It just nails it. Uh, because it, it was the original. It was the, it was the thing that, you know, was the creative impulse. Like, after it made a shit ton of money, somebody somewhere was like, hur, 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 we need a paranormal activity too. Uh, whereas this movie was like, hey, what if we, on the cheap, did this very scary, very, uh, very scaled down kind of horror film? And, uh, and that's why it works. And so that brings us to our final discussion, which is scares. Is the movie scary? And I think that's the other thing that really works in Paranormal Activity. I think it is really frightening. Um, you know, the things like Katie getting up in the middle of the night and just staring at Mika. And the door opening and closing. Like, the, one of the first things you see is that door swing closed and then open. And it's a very minor thing, but... Because it starts so small that by the time you get to Katie being dragged out of bed, you know, you're totally bought in because you understand, like, this has escalated. Um, you know, I got to see this movie when it was not jump scares and, and things happening that were pulling uh, one of the characters down a hallway. It was just a door opening and closing, and because it starts to so small... And because there's this sense of momentum and things getting worse, um, that, that sense of dread accompanies it. And I think that's why Paranormal Activity 1 works as well as it does. Because, again, it's just a, this constant evolution and escalation of what the characters are experiencing. And by the time things are at their worst, you kind of get the sense that it's too late. And so there's this growing dread and there's this sense of fatalism that comes with it towards the end of the movie. And I think it's really fascinating. It's a, a really good uh, build up and payoff. And in the final scare, like some people will say like, well, there's stuff that happens all off camera and then there's kind of a jump scare at the end. I'm like, yeah, that's totally fine because that's, that's what the movie was like that. That feels like a logical conclusion to me. Um, is it the most narrow, narratively satisfying? Maybe, maybe not. But 
it, it feels like a proper ending to the movie. Okay, so paranormal, uh, paranormal Activity, it just kind of nails all five categories that we talk about on Found Footage Fool. I think it's a, a, a terrific, terrific movie. Uh, so that's going to bring us to Paranormal Activity 2. And, you know, in real world terms, that was the thing I watched right after Paranormal Activity. Because uh, it had been forever since I'd been, seen Paranormal Activity 2. It's been a long time since I've seen any of the movies past the first one, which I watched not too terribly long ago for uh, one of the 31 days of Halloween. And then again, you know, recently, and I've seen it a number of times, it's kind of a go-to. It's a, it's a great found footage movie, and I love found footage movies, so there you go. It's one I like to throw on periodically. And then we, we get to Paranormal Activity, like two through five or six or whatever, where I'm like, I've seen all of these movies probably one time and then not again. Um, although there are a couple I remember being fond of, but not necessarily Paranormal Activity 2, uh, but we'll talk about that. So, uh, keeping the camera on, um, does the movie do a good job of that? And I would say, yeah, because it's all security camera footage. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of the, uh, the evolution from Paranormal Activity is it's not people trying to capture ghostly activity in the house because when the movie begins, uh, there is not that. Um, and, and maybe just to set the stage, if you've never seen Paranormal Activity 2, I mean, obviously spoilers for it, but what the movie is, is it takes place before and sort of after the events of Paranormal Activity, where Katie's sister and her family are starting to experience the, this, you know, Paranormal Activity. And we get them in their home uh, that's got a security system with cameras set up. And so we're seeing, you know, the events of the movie through that lens or those lenses, perhaps. And the idea is that uh, she and her sister both experienced this paranormal stuff when they were kids. Uh, it seems to be after the sister because of this demonic arrangement from their past where... Uh, this entity had given luck and success to an ancestor of Katie's and uh, her sister, uh, whose name is Allie. And so Allie's young uh, daughter, actually it's a mixed marriage, so it's the daughter of Daniel named Christy. And Christy uh, begins to kind of explore demonic stuff um you know as things in the house are going a little weird and she's the one who kind of uncovers this legend about hey there you know demons will come after a firstborn male child and there hasn't been a lot of firstborn male male childs in the uh, family of, of katie and Allie, except now that they've got a, a young son named hunter and so maybe Hunter is actually what this demon is after. And in addition to Daniel and Christy and Allie in the house, uh, along with baby Hunter, there is also a housekeeper named Martine. And Martine seems to kind of know what's up. Like, you know, she feels some bad juju in the house and does... Uh, some cleansing rituals and that kind of thing, which Daniel sees and is like, I gotta fire this woman because she's a crazy person and I just don't want my family exposed to, you know, all these crazy rituals or whatever. It, it, that I find kind of thin. But anyway, we'll get to that. And so, the you know, this demon is, is haunting the house. Martine basically says there is a way to kick the demonic force to someone else in the family. And that's what they end up doing. That's what Daniel and Christy uh, kind of doing. Daniel more so than Christy. But Daniel basically uses this cross to bounce the demon over to Katie. And so most of the movie Paranormal Activity 2 takes place prior to Paranormal Activity where all that stuff happens. Then the demon gets kicked to Katie. And then Katie shows up and takes the baby and kills Daniel and Allie. All right. So let's get to our tropes. Uh, what about keeping the camera on? You know, we talked about this with the the security uh, footage. Uh, terrific. All that all that is fine. Let's get to characters then. 
So the characters are kind of the problem because you're trying to get into the lore of the Paranormal Activity movies a bit more. And one of the things that makes the first one work so well, as I mentioned, is this sort of careful uh, exposition dumps that happen throughout the movie. But it feels very organic. Whereas in this one, it's more like the the girl Christy being like, hey, I've been looking up this stuff, and guess what? Here's some exposition. Also, there's nobody to really root for. Like, the, the thing that makes the first one good uh, when it comes to the characters is that their relationships with one another feel very organic. And you're kind of with them because, hey, we're trying to capture this ghost stuff uh, on camera, and you're w sort of immediately with them. Because you're like, oh yeah, absolutely, let's see what the camera shows. Let's see what the film shows. With this movie, with Paranormal Activity 2, you're kind of dumped into this family that you don't really... Like, they're they're not super likable. They're, the, you know, the characters as written aren't bad people. They're just not terribly interesting. Like, I, I, there's just not a, a lot of reason to, to kind of get behind them. Uh, part of it is that you have to go through the business of them denying that anything is going on while things are going on, even though in the first movie you start with, hey, there's something going on. Going into Paranormal Activ Activity 2, you have presumably seen Paranormal Activity and you know something is going on, but you're still going through this process of, oh, well, you know, we've got to convince everyone that there is something going on. And Christy seems to be the only person doing that. Um, even Allie, who has experienced this stuff when, when she was younger, like she and Katie, like Katie pops into the movie periodically, and they sort of decide, hey, we're just not going to talk about all this stuff that happened in our past because it happened in our past and it's not terribly, uh, 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 you know, like a happy memory or anything. And so we're just going to kind of ignore it. And so it's really Christy doing all the heavy lifting to make all of this stuff happen and, and make sense and expand upon the mythology of the first movie. And I just don't know that any of the characters are memorable, you know? Like, they're they're fine. Martine is the best character of the movie, and she's only in it for a few minutes because she's the only one who seems to know what's going on and, and how to deal with it. Um, and, and you don't have characters like the medium, I mean, she's sort of the medium of the movie, but you don't have other characters just kind of bombing in to, to give it some spice other than Martine, um, who is roundly rejected by, you know, Daniel, the, the head of the family or the, the man in the family, uh, head is probably overstating it because I don't know how much he's in charge of anything, but yeah, it, it, you know, the characters are a bit of a, a mixed bag because they're fine. Like, one of the major characters in the movie is a baby. And I don't mean to impugn the good name of babies anywhere, but, you know, babies are kind of boring. They don't do anything but, like, sleep and cry and shit. And that's not a movie. I mean, I guess it could be. It's probably German, if it is. But <laughs> it, it, it's not compelling in a horror film. Uh, all right, so then you get to authenticity. And this also is a point where it feels a little movie-ish, where the first one doesn't. Like, the first one starts small and, and works its way up, and this one starts fairly small as well. But, but again, you know that paranormal activity happened. You know what's coming. And because of that, it drains it of a little bit of the authenticity, because you know you're watching a movie. You know you're watching a sequel to this thing. And so how on earth are we supposed to believe that this thing is quote-unquote real? Uh, so I, I don't think the authenticity works really well. Like, the cameras are authentic in their placement and all that. Um, but it doesn't really give you a lot of room to buy. And, you know, again, the characters aren't doing any, any favors for you here either. Where they feel real and lived in. They feel very much like movie characters. Uh, so, yeah, it, it it feels like you're always at arm's length with the, the, the veracity of this movie. Okay, and then we come to watchability. And here we also have some problems, because where the first movie, even though you are going to have those people out there that are going to tell you that uh, paranormal activity is kind of dull, 
I would invite them to watch Paranormal Activity too, which I think is super boring for a solid hour. And, and that's sort of what I remember about a lot of the sequels, even though I haven't gone back to revisit them. Although, keep in mind, we're going to be doing this uh, a lot through December. We're going to try to work our way through all of these movies in, in the month. You know, the, the ghosts of, of Christmas paranormal or something. Um, but, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it, it does so much setup. And then it's not until the last few minutes that anything really happens. Uh, the closest you get is some cabinets flying open, which is a good scene when uh, Allie is kind of in the kitchen and sees everything fly open. Um, and there's a pretty good one where she goes down into the basement and, you you know, she's dragged into the basement and then she's in there for a little while and then comes out all possessed. And that's kind of fun. But again, it's, it's sort of too little too late um, where the last half hour is interesting and some stuff happens. But, eh. and then, you know, the, the larger mythology is that, oh, by the way, Katie was never the target of this thing, which sort of unravels a little bit of what makes paranormal activity work, but also it kind of kicks the can on that to, uh, you know, Allie being the target and more particularly her son Hunter. And then Katie then shows up at the end of the movie to just very quickly dispatch everybody in the house but the baby and then take off with, with the child, setting up a further sequel. Uh, it just doesn't really land ever, and I don't think that's the fault of the actors necessarily. I just don't think it's terribly well written is one of the problems. I think Katie is actually pretty good because there's that point where, you know, after they kick the can over to her and the movie Paranormal Activity sort of begins, that's where it's placed within the chronology of the movie, when she comes over and is like, hey, you know when we talked recently about things being weird around your house? Are they still weird? Because now my house is getting weird. And then when she goes home, of course, that is the beginning of, of the movie Paranormal Activity that we've seen. So it just makes you feel like, oh, I should really just watch Paranormal Activity again. That That's the good one. Uh, and then we get to scares, and... There just aren't any in this movie. Like, Paranormal Activity 2, I don't think is frightening. Uh, whereas Paranormal Activity is. It, it it feels like it builds to some great scares. And this movie feels like it's just living too much in that shadow and not carving out its own way to scare the audience. It's just sort of miming some of the scares from the original Paranormal Activity and... and never quite gets to a place where it feels like it it manages that it never reaches those heights and doesn't even come all that close uh so you know in in fairness to paranormal activity too it was directed by a guy named todd williams who is probably best known for doing the movie cell uh which is not a great movie either and i think that was the last thing he directed um, interestingly, it was co-written by Christopher Landon, who went on to do, uh, you know, all the Happy Death Day movies and, uh, the, the, uh, Freaky, was that the name of the movie that was the Freaky Friday serial killer, uh, thing? Yeah, uh, I had to double check. And he also, you know, was a writer on, uh, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, which I remember being sort of my favorite, but yeah, he's a, a writer on all of the, the movies going forward. Uh, so, anyway, we'll talk more about that later. And, and just in, in a brief recap, I just don't think Paranormal Activity 2 is very scary. I don't think the characters are great. I don't... It does expand the mythology and sets up some stuff that I know pays off later in the series. It just doesn't feel like it's a great movie on its own. Uh, and I think that's a, a real bummer. Uh, especially coming off of the dizzying highs of paranormal activity. It just never quite gets there. Uh, although it does set up that trope of like, hey, we're looking at this scene for a second and then moving to this camera and then moving to this camera uh, so that you start to get a feel for, oh, let's just keep our eyes focused. And as the low, scary tone begins, we know that something's going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's 
not not a great entry into the series. Uh, next time around, we'll try to knock out uh, Paranormal Activity 3 and 4 uh, and see where we get with that business. But uh, that is it for this time on Found Footage Fool. Uh, as always, please, please, please be sure you are subscribing uh, on the, uh, the Legion Podcast channel uh, as well as uh, to the Dark Parade on its own on the podcast catcher of your choice. Uh, if you go to legionpodcast.com and uh, go to the shows and find uh, the Dark Parade over there, if you click on that link, it'll take you to a page with all of the old shows, uh, along with, uh, as part of those posts, a link over on the Discord channel. And so that's where you can find me. Uh, I don't really pay attention to social media all that much, uh, especially these days when it all just seems just, just the worst. Uh, but I am on the Discord channel a whole bunch when uh, when I can afford to be and I'm not writing a paper. Um, and and will be uh, in the coming days for sure. So anyway, um, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. We will be back next week. Uh, I, I'm hoping for a an episode where I'm actually joined by a guest that's not a what you watch and or a heart of horror, even though that will be coming in December. Um, but we'll see. Again, I'm finishing my degree. I got a couple of papers and a final to do. We'll see how much progress I make between now and next week as to whether this is a solo episode or if it's something I can sit down and actually do some research for. But, but after that, uh, there, w- there will be some time to, uh, to do some uh, bigger and better and bolder episodes. So until then, thank you for listening to this episode of Found Footage Rule. And as always, thank you for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you in a week. <laughs>